Well, hi, everyone. Sean Humphreys here. Welcome to the Take Charge of Change podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we're going to talk about Chapter 3 from the Resilient Professional eBook. We're going to unpack the process of change. We're also going to work through some very practical worksheets to help you understand the change process. And one of the most important pieces of the change process is getting real around current reality. You'll enjoy this edition of the podcast. Okay, like I said, we're going to unpack Chapter 3 from the Resilient Professional eBook. If you've not already done so, I'd encourage you to go to our website, takechargeofchange.com. When you go to the home page, you'll be prompted to download the eBook. Just type in your email address and you'll get a link to download the eBook. We have some specific worksheets that I'll cover off in that eBook to, um, to really help you unpack some of the important components of change. Now, why is this topic important? Professional personal resilience critically important conversation because we're constantly dealing with change forces in our life. Micro forces, whether it's relationships, or the work that we do, uh, our emotional health, our physical health, um, you know, our finances, all impact our ability to navigate through change and transitions. Then you have macro forces, which would be you know, political changes, economic changes, tax law changes, the environment, I mean, you name it, there's all kinds of macro forces, the technology around us that impact our lives. So to the extent that we foster our personal and professional resilience, we'll be able to navigate through those changes more successfully. So on this uh, introductory comment here on the, on the chapter, chapter three, we talked about the change process. Number one is cultivating a powerful purpose. We'll unpack that one in more detail at a later podcast that we'll do. But one of the things I will comment on, on is the importance of cultivating a powerful why. Many of us are driven day to day by extrinsic motivations. You know, the the kind of home or area that we're living in, the car we drive, the money we make, the people we know, they're all extrinsically driven. You know, pats on the back, awards, accolade, recognition. I'm not saying those things are important. They are important, but the one thing that has staying power in our lives to drive us towards uh, a meaningful contribution and making a difference in uh, our world and also being fulfilled is having powerful intrinsic motivations, a powerful why, a powerful purpose. And that's a really, really important part of the change process. Now, we're going to talk about facing uh, the current reality of our situation in today's podcast. And the reason this is a really important conversation is that uh, all of us as humans have a great ability to rationalize away issues in our life. And and so I'm going to walk you through a bit of a self-assessment that looks at various aspects of your life to maybe sh- shed some light on areas that you don't look at a lot that might prompt you to begin initiating some level of change uh, in your life in different areas. Now, again, you'll only be motivated to really look at these things if at some level you're dissatisfied with uh, your life personally or professionally, or you think you can get better in some ways, or you're overwhelmed, then you'll probably feel a little bit motivated to unpack these concepts in more detail. Now, the first thing that we'll take a look at as a resource uh, from Al Siebert's great book, The Resiliency Advantage, and he had a, a, a bit of a self-assessment document that he put together, and this is a series of questions where you, you basically rank each question on a scale, one disagree strongly, five agree strongly, and it's really to assess your current level of, uh, of resilience personally. So as an example, in a crisis or a chaotic situation, I calm myself and focus on taking useful actions. Are you um, a five, strongly agree with that, or a one, disagree strongly? I can tolerate high levels of uncertainty and ambiguity. Where do you rank yourself? So what I'd like you to do right now is go through each of those questions and do a self-assessment. Uh, So what you can do is you can pause the video, take a look at the worksheet. Now, when you're finished the self-assessment, there's a scoring system here. So if you scored under 50, basically what uh, Siebert said is is you're really in need of really fortifying your personal resiliency. Uh, You're getting derailed. Uh, You're not effective. Um, You're really not, you know, working out of your full potential. And if you're in the middle, it means that you have um, some gaps, you're doing okay, but by going through 
courses and programs to, to really improve resiliency, you're going to fill in the gaps more effectively and become that much more resilient. So I'd encourage you to go through the exercise and at the end of it to take a few minutes to do a bit of a self-reflection uh, exercise. What did you learn from the exercise? What areas do you think you need to focus in on? The next area is looking at various aspects of our current reality and that's the physical, emotional, mental and spiritual. All these areas really have um, a major impact on our professional personal resilience and to the extent that one gets out of whack or imbalance it can really again derail us uh, professionally and personally if we're not attentive to it. Um, so I think that's self-evident and so without talking about it too much more let's go to the physical reality. So this is a, a bit of a self-assessment and it's a listing of, of what are uh, some of the most accepted best practices around managing our physical reality. So I'll give you an example. Um, I eat a healthy breakfast every day. Now again that one, no, I know for my wife Tanya that's a really critical one. Um, I tend to practice what's called intermittent fasting. I intentionally don't have a breakfast but I certainly focus on eating clean meals and a healthy diet through the day. Um, I um, eat a clean diet of fruits, some, you know, a, a veggie, some fruit, healthy cuts of meat as an example, grass uh, fed cuts. I drink water through the day. I'm adequately hydrated. I'm paying attention to that. Your level of hydration has a huge impact on cognition. So go through that. You may not agree with each of these points, but it will be a prompt for you to go, hmm, maybe I need to focus in on this area. And then write down three areas that you think you need to really maybe zero in on in the aspect of your physical resilience. The next area is current reality around uh, mental resilience and uh, that ties into a whole bunch of areas. So logical and realistic thinking, focus, concentration, mental preparation, self-awareness, time management, and creativity. Again, if you go through this self-assessment, there's questions in each of these areas of mental resilience and fostering it that will give you some clues as to whether or not you've got some gaps in this area. Obviously hugely important. To the extent that you're unable to access your cognition and your creativity, that really puts a damper on your professional success. So again, once you go through that exercise, write down uh, maybe the three major gaps that came uh, across to you as you went through the exercise. Uh, current reality emotionally. So uh, that's you know having the ability to be solutions-based and optimistic generally, to have confidence, to have interpersonal effectiveness. So I make the comment here that when relationships work, uh, they can be incredibly energizing. And when they're broken, your ability to focus and have enthusiasm can be severely compromised. So reflect on the following questions. How are your relationships at home? How are they at work? Any struggles here? Be honest with yourself and start to brainstorm how you might be able to make some improvements. Uh, it can be a really tough work, but it's worth it. The relationship piece can be extremely tough because we allow egos to get in the way and we get entrenched positions um, and yet it's, it's a critical derailer of our professional personal resilience if we don't foster work on our relationships both personally and professionally. So it's a really really key area to focus in on. So I'd like you to take a look at each of these statements. So managing adversity, confidence and personal security, interpersonal effectiveness. Go through the questions and check each statement that would be true for you and then write down the three responses that would be gaps that you need to begin working on. Okay, the next one is, is spiritual reality um, and spiritual re spirituality. Now again, depending on who you are, you're going to define spirituality in different ways. Uh, so I might have my vision for spirituality and you will have yours and there's a range of them. Um, but it really is about cultivating powerful purposes and trying to make a difference in your life uh, and the lives of others by really going after this powerful purpose and vision for how you're going to interact with the world and how you're going to allocate your time. So I want you to take a look at your spiritual reality. Um, have you spent time asking yourself questions around purpose and vision? and embracing um, big ideas around your life and your life's purpose. So on this worksheet um, you go through different questions about vision and purpose and principle-centered ethics. Go through those questions and again I want you to highlight the top three items you think are gaps uh, in your life today.
Okay, so that's chapter three from the Resilient Professional eBook. This is a really worthwhile exercise to go through because as you begin to map out your own personal program for cultivating personal and professional resilience, uh, you need to have some practical ideas about gaps that you should be working on to cultivate that resilience in your life. So I encourage you to go through that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Take Charge of Change podcast. If you lead people, if you're an organizational leader, and you're intrigued about how you can help your staff and your teams to navigate the major change forces in our world and the transition events that your people have to navigate through, reach out to us. We'd love to start a conversation about how we can create customized training programs to help your organization and your people to be both professionally and personally resilient. You be resilient. Take care. Thank you.